In this video, we're going to calculate the standard deviation of a set of numbers. Now, there's two formulas you need to be aware of. The first one is the population standard deviation. Now, this formula is represented by the letter sigma. That's the standard deviation. It's equal to the sum of all the differences between every point in the data set and the population mean. The population mean is mu, which is this symbol here. And then you need to square it divided by n, which is all of the numbers in the set. And then you got to take the square root of the whole result. So that's the population standard deviation. The next formula is the sample standard deviation. So let's say if you have just a sample of a population, not the entire population. If you just have a sample data out of the entire data, then you want to use this formula. S, which is the standard deviation, is equal to sigma, the sum of all of the differences between every point and the mean. That's the sample mean. In the other equation, we had the population mean represented by mu, but this is the uh, sample mean, which is basically the average of all the data points in the set. And then you have to square it, but it's going to be divided by n minus 1 as opposed to n. And so that's how you calculate the standard deviation of a sample. Now, let's work on an example. Let's say if we have two set of numbers, 4, 5, and 6, and also 3, 5, and 7. Which one has a greater standard deviation? Let's use the population standard deviation formula. But if we had to guess, which set of numbers has the greater standard deviation? Is it the one on the left or the one on the right? What would you say? Well, you need to understand the basic idea of standard deviation. You need to know what it measures. Standard deviation tells you how far apart the numbers are related to each other. So the more spread out they are, the greater the standard deviation. 4, 5, and 6 are closer to each other than 3, 5, and 7. And you could tell if you plot them on a number line. Let's put 5 in the middle. So 4, 5, and 6, here they are on a number line. Now in contrast, let's put the same numbers on this number line. We're going to have 3, 5, and 7. So if you look at the, the red points, the points in red are further apart. The points in blue, they're very close together. So therefore, 4, 5, and 6 has a lower standard deviation than 3, 5, and 7. So sigma is low, and here the sigma value is high. Now go ahead and calculate the population standard deviation for this, for this set of numbers, 3, 5, and 7. So what's the first thing that we should do? The first thing that we should do is calculate the mean. To find the mean, it's going to be the sum of all the numbers divided by 3. Now, because the three numbers are evenly spaced apart, the mean is going to be the middle number, 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 7 is 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that's the mean. Now, what should we do next, now that we have the mean? Now, think of the formula. It's going to be a sigma of every point minus the mean squared divided by n, and then all of this is within the square root. So here's how to use the equation. First, we're going to use the first point, 3, and subtract it by the mean, and then square it. Next, we're going to take the second point, 5. 
subtract it from the mean and square it. And then it's going to be 7 minus 5 squared. So each of these three points, you're going to plug into x sub i. And then you're going to square the differences between each of those values. And the sigma represents sum. So you're going to add every difference that you get. Or you're going to add the square of every difference that you get. And now let's divide it by n. So n is the number of numbers that we have in this set. There are three numbers inside. So n is 3. And then we're going to take the square root of the entire thing. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 5 minus 5 is 0. 7 minus 5 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. So we have the square root of 8 divided by 3. And at this point, we're going to use a calculator. 8 divided by 3 is about 2.67. And if you take the square root of that, you're going to get 1.63. So that's the standard deviation for 3, 5, and 7. Now let's calculate the standard deviation for the other uh, set of numbers, 4, 5, and 6. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try this example. Calculate the standard deviation using the same formula. So let's go ahead and begin. Let's calculate the population mean. It's going to be 4 plus 5 plus 6 divided by the number of numbers that we have, which is 3. 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. And we know that 15 divided by 3 is 5. So once again, anytime the numbers are evenly spread apart, the mean is going to be the middle number. So now we can calculate the standard deviation. So sigma is going to equal the square root. But before we do that, let's calculate the differences. So the first difference that we have, the first number is going to be 4. And we're going to subtract it from the mean and then square it. The next number is 5. Subtract it from the mean and then square it. And then after that, the last number is 6. So it's going to be 6 minus 5 squared. Now it's divided by n. And let's not forget to take the square root of the entire thing. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is simply 1. 5 minus 5 is 0. 6 minus 5 is 1. And it's all divided by 3. 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have the square root of 2 divided by 3. Now, 2 divided by 3 as a decimal is about 0.67. And the square root of 0.67 is 0.816. So as you can see, the standard deviation is less because these numbers are closer to each other. They're not far apart from the mean. In the other example, 3, 5, and 7, they're further apart from the mean, which is 5. 3 is 2 units away from 5. 4 is only 1 unit away from 5. And that's why the standard deviation is so much less. Now let's go back to the first example. We said that the population standard deviation is approximately 1.63. So given this information, how can you calculate the variance? V-A-R-I-A-N-C-E. How can we find the variance? The variance is simply the square of the standard deviation. So 1.63 squared is equal to now keep in mind, this is a rounded answer. I don't remember what the exact answer was, but once you square it, it's about 2.66. So that's how you can calculate the variance. The formula for variance is basically the sum of all the square differences between every point and the population mean divided by n. It's basically the same formula without the square root symbol. Well, that's it for this video. So now you know how to calculate the population standard deviation and also the sample standard deviation. Even though we did just one of them, the process is the same of finding the other one. The only difference is you have n minus 1 instead of n. You also know how to calculate the variance as well. So that concludes this video. By the way, 
If you want to find more of my videos, you can check out my channel or visit my website, video-tutor.net. And you can find playlists on uh, algebra, trig, pre-calculus, calculus, chemistry, and physics. So those are the subjects that I currently offer right now. And if you're interested, just uh, feel free to check that out. So thanks again for watching.